I was really struggling to fall asleep last night, so I thought in my infinite wisdom and stupidity that I would play a zen and relaxing puzzle strategy game to hopefully tire my brain out so that I would be knackered enough to sleep. <laughs> I picked Panorama, which is a game that came out earlier this week, and it's heavily inspired in my view, or it's at least reminded me of, Doff Romantic, a game that I absolutely love and adore. They are similar, but there are some key differences, and I would say Panorama is Doff Romantic Easy Mode, and that has lots of advantages, because I still found myself playing at 5 o'clock in the morning as the sun was rising, and I didn't regret a minute of it. In Panorama, you're building a city, and you're doing it with hexagonal tiles. Each of these tiles are different terrain types, so you've got forest, rock, uh, fields for agriculture, water and cities for towns and as you lay these down you're attempting to try and lay them out in a way that means that they're joined up together so you can have like one point for putting one down on its own two if you've got two connecting and then three if you've got three sides connecting and then beyond that what you're trying to look to do is you get these star tiles and they have must have a certain type of tile connected to the edges and so what you're doing is plopping them down in strategic locations to then put your like it might say I need to be connected to three water for example so it must have three water tiles connecting to its edges so that you can then satisfy that what they do is they spark bigger points for you and so as you're building up more and more points you're trying to get as many points as possible before you run out of tiles the big thing with Panorama is that your tiles are replenished by laying down and satisfying criteria for specific monument buildings. Now these can be like a city hall, it could be a, a water geyser, it could be a, a like wheat silo for example. And each one of these things also does something once you've satisfied it. So what it might do is upgrade some of the tiles that are around so that instead of them scoring one point, they now add an extra point on and score two, for example. It could be that it like the geysers, they spew out 10, 20 or 30 water tiles randomly in an area around you. Other ones decide that they're going to double the score of each tile that you place within a certain radius. And each, uh, they're like starred, these different uh, buildings that you're putting down, one, two and three, for the small, medium and large area that they cover. And so that then starts to factor into your scores. Because if you're running short on tiles, you'll want to try and make sure that you're managing your city and maximising each tile that you're placing down. Because if you're just scoring one or two points per tile because you're just putting them down willy-nilly, you'll never reach the score that's required to then get and unlock the next monument and then have enough tiles to complete it because they come out as a seven tile thing often for you to put down and it might be like three rock to town um, and a flower which I'll get onto in a second because that's like a little slightly different tile that you've got um, and so as you're building those up that will then magically add on loads and loads of more points and often save you and boost you up so that you can then lay down tiles make a better city and then get to the next level. This sounds probably more complicated explaining it than it is once you're actually up and running but there's nuances to the scores and it took me a while to kind of click how to really lean into the buildings plus the tile uh, like groupings together and so on and so forth as you kind of move around because suddenly you can change a score that gets you three or four points to sometimes getting you 11 12 or 13 and that's really really valuable as you get towards the end of the game because you, as you build out your city, you're kind of running around the perimeter trying to think where on earth do I stick these things now so that I can maximise my score. And sometimes it's quite worthwhile to leave like little beehive holes <laughs> in the beeswax as you kind of go around building out your city because then you can drop in these flower tiles. Now flower tiles are almost like a multiplier because they level up things that are around you and they don't they're not attributed to any of the other types of terrain. They're quite often paired with another thing as well. And so if you've got like a flower and a city, for example, and you place it next to um, 
an object that requires two uh, sides to be hit of cities, that flower will also count as one, so it will, it will score twice, basically. And that can get you out of some tight nooks and crannies. It's also quite strategic, because if you manage to line stuff up where you can put in a flower and a few things require like something to touch it, then it will satisfy all conditions and it will get you a big score, and that's really, really helpful. For those of you that are looking at this going, does this not just feel like Doth Romantic? It does, but it doesn't at the same time. And the reason why I say that this is like Doth Romantic easy mode is because tile edges do not matter in this game. When you place down a tile, all of its edges are whatever it says it is. Now tiles may have multiple things in it, so it might be a, f a flower and a water, for example, or it might be a city, a rock, and a forest, but it will be that for all six sides. And so you don't have to worry about spinning around tiles and trying to really line stuff up. As a result though, that does mean that sometimes your city looks like it's a little bit clunky. Um, and so things don't run quite so smoothly as uh, like your city pans out because it's not about creating massive sectors of things. It's like tiny groupings, um, but it is still beautiful to look at and you can zoom right in and out. And there's a cool mechanic here where uh, tiles generate animals that you can click on to add extra points if you're getting really stuck. <laughs> and that's helpful too. So yeah, you can really like almost like a hidden object game, go around and try and find all the different animals and click on them for extra points. You can just highlight them by pressing and holding space. And if you're in a bind, it's worthwhile doing if you're just a few points away and you've almost run out of tiles. The run through that I had during like literally last night took me just over four hours to complete the game. And I am slightly concerned that I completed it on first try <laughs> um, without too much trouble. It did run me slightly close towards the end, but it was because it wasn't giving me any rock tiles for ages, and I just needed one, and I had like 12 goes left, and I was like, come on, and it gave me it on the very last tile, so I was like, whew, but it did feel quite easy, there is no difficulty mode, what it does have though is a creator mode, uh, where you can create your own tiny dioramas, and it completely disregards all of the rules, but if you're coming here for like a competitive puzzle strategy game, it's one single mode with one single difficulty, and that might off-put a few people, perhaps. But you've got that um, procedural generation, I guess, so that you're never quite sure what you're going to get. And you're always choosing from one of three different monuments for what you want to place down next. So you can vary things around and almost put your own rules on if you wanted to, but it's up to the player to be able to do that. The developers do say that there's going to be more content coming, whether that's more modes or more buildings or more monuments, I'm not entirely sure. But it does strike me as there could be some difficulty modes in here, and that would really extend Panorama's longevity. There's one other thing that I want to comment on about this game, and it is the literally only frustration I had. Because the graphics, the gameplay, the music, the sound, the way how it just feels and all comes together is absolutely superb. But I have one tiny gripe, and it's the fact that your city, the camera is always turning and rotating your city around. And when you're trying to lay down tiles, sometimes they come in like awkward shapes because they've got bonus points on. And you're trying to slot it into the right place and you think, oh yeah, I think that's where I'm going to go. And because your city's rotating, suddenly you go to put it down and it's not on the tile where you're expecting. And I was like, mm, undo move. And that happened repeatedly over and over and over and over again. And it was starting to really, not great, but it was just, I had, I, it made me really aware that the city was rotating constantly. And I was like, right, shuffle, 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 shuffle. I just need a don't rotate option on this game and I would be gloriously happy. <laughs> but yeah, had a great time. Four hours very well worth spent. I do question some of the replayability of Panorama potentially, but if you love Doth Romantic, you'll enjoy this, particularly if you found Doth Romantic hard or you kind of crash out of that game quite early on. I do quite often. This is a much more zen-like experience full of cute animals and a relatively easy to understand system for you to get very far in the game before you crash and burn. Take care.
Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.